So we're currently on day four of the four-day property course. And what I want to talk to you now is about, is it possible to get around paying stamp duty? Okay. Who likes the idea of paying stamp duty? Should we try that again? Who likes the idea of paying stamp duty? No. 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 Right, would you like to get around it if you could? Yes, yes. please. Okay, look, let's have a look at the different potential ways around it. For dearer properties, okay, um, kind of over about seven, eight hundred grand, there are um, firms out there that are high-end accounting firms that have got tax walkarounds, okay? Well, instead of paying the stamp duty, you do a stamp duty mitigation. And the stamp duty mitigation, they charge about 40% of what the stamp duty would be, but 100% of that fee goes to them. Yeah. Would I do that? If I'm running a limited company project that's building a block of flats, or building three or four properties, or however many it is, and I'm buying something that's several million pounds, the stamp duty is going to be quite considerable. So doing stamp duty mitigation means that we just pay 40%. Because it's a limited company and it's a project, at the end of the project, the chances are that limited company is going to be shut down when everything's paid. Okay? So there isn't recourse for the government to come and try and unravel the mitigation <coughs> walk around. Buying this property here, we're in now for 1.8 million, the stamp duty was before the extra 3% over 100 grand. Okay. I chose to pay the stamp duty because I'm holding it long term. Okay. So what I recommend is for long term projects, that you actually pay the stamp duty and be done with it, but for shorter term projects in limited companies that we actually could use stamp duty mitigation. But you've got to look into it yourself and decide what's best for you. Okay? Now that's one way around. <coughs> now one of my clients actually run a project. So just imagine buying a project again that's several million pound that's got quite a few hundred thousand pound of stamp duty. What he did is he did not pay the stamp duty when he bought the property. He actually run the project, sold the project at the end and paid the stamp duty and he was fined 300 pound for late payment. Now, uh, if he'd have had to borrow the money for the stamp duty, the interest on a few hundred thousand pound would be far more considerable than the sum that we're just talking about, the 300 quid fine. Again, look into it very carefully. All the stamp duty rules are on the stamp duty website, the government website. Um, there was a recent court case where it was found that stamp duty, the extra 3%, the normal stamp duty still has to be paid, but when there is a property that um, uh, had work, it has got, is non-livable, i.e. it's not mortgageable, it's uninhabitable, then when you're buying that property, the extra 3% doesn't have to be paid. There was a court case quite recently um, which found for the developer, not for the government. So just remember, uninhabitable properties, you don't have to pay the extra 3%. Now, the final thing, and my favourite thing of all, is delayed completions. You buy the property, you exchange contracts. Okay? You do work building extensions, doing whatever, you sell it on because you've got an assigned contract <coughs> excuse me, to the uh, uh, end party. The end party transacts with uh, the original vendor 
and your contract gives you the bit in the middle. <coughs> so when you're buying a property on a delayed completion, you never have to pay stamp duty, you never have to fund it because you're not buying it, you don't need a mortgage. So it saves you a lot like that. Now, if you were doing a delayed completion with the intention of living there or renting the property out but not completing for some time, then what's called substantial performance is deemed to take place. Now, substantial performance, which means you have the benefit from the property. Okay? If you're doing it up, you're not living there, you've not got the benefit from it. But if you live there or you tenant it and get rent, then that benefit is called substantial performance if deems have taken place. Therefore, you're supposed to pay stamp on exchange. You are actually supposed to pay stamp on exchange, it's just that no one does because they don't have the money to do it most of the time. Okay? So, um, easy to get around. Instead of exchanging contracts, we take an option on it. Then you don't have to pay stamp. So there's times for exchange with delayed completions, there's time for options. When you find a deal, that's what our mentoring program is all about. You come and ask me and I'll tell you how to get the most out of it on that particular occasion.